In a battle, which matters more, how many troops you have or the fighting effectiveness of those troops? In this video, I want to explore a mathematical model for war, one that's going to help us predict who's going to win or lose, and help explain why in so many historical battles you get a complete collapse of one side despite relatively comparable initial armies. For example, in this simulation we have two equally sized armies with equally effective troops in it. It's a coin toss as who's going to win or lose, and they're both going to take really big losses regardless. But in this simulation, where it's eight ranged units versus six ranged units, it's just complete devastation. The one side is taken out completely, and the larger side only loses a single troop. So how can we model this mathematically? Now, I'm going to imagine I have two different populations. I'm going to call them aliens and humans, just to keep it lighthearted. And these are functions of time. The number of aliens and the number of humans is decreasing over the battle as a function of time. Now, in mathematical modeling, I really love to study not functions, but the rates of change of functions. It's often easier to figure out how things are changing and then use those change to figure out the actual values. So how should I express the change in the amount of aliens and the change in the amount of humans? I'm imagining battles like my simulations using range units so they're firing away. And basically, the losses to the aliens is proportional to how many humans there are. Something like this. Negative, because it's going down. Alpha, some proportionality constant that's always positive, And then the number of humans. If I double the number of humans, there's double the number of projectiles. There's double the rate of losses of aliens. A formula like this makes sense to me. Similarly, for the rate of loss of humans, it's also going to be negative. It's also going to have a proportionality concept, but it's going to be proportional to the number of aliens. The more aliens shooting, the bigger your losses are. Now, this is a model. You don't have to like my assumptions. It's only going to be as good as the results are useful. But nevertheless, this is the foundational model that I'm going to use, a very simple so-called system of differential equations. So how can you solve such things? I want to show you one method first called eliminating the dependence on time. And what we're going to do here is we're going to just take a quotient of my two equations. I'll take the top equation, divide it out by the bottom equation. For this quotient of two different rates of change, I can rewrite that as just the derivative of a with respect to h. This is just chain rule, and it's what I mean when I say that I'm eliminating the explicit dependence on time. All of these things are functions of time, but I've taken instead of derivatives with respect to time, I now have the change in aliens with respect to the change in humans. This now is a straightforward differential equation. I'm going to show you how to solve it, but if you want my entire playlist on how to solve differential equations, I'll put a link down into the description. But this equation is simple enough, I can show you the trick. Basically, I'm going to isolate everything to do with a's on one side and everything to do with h's on the other. So I sort of multiply up by the a and multiply up by the dh. If I then integrate both sides of this, well, the integral of a is going to be a squared divided by 2. The integral of h is a squared divided by 2. And I get this equation here. This is an equation that relates the value of a and the value of h. It's got some constants in it. The alpha, the beta, and the 2 are just sort of part of the structure of the equations. But more importantly, it has this plus c, this integration constant plus c. Let's try to graph this. I'm going to write a squared minus h squared and this is going to be equal to a value of the constant. And what we see is this graph. This is the graph of a hyperbola. I have h as my horizontal axis and a as my vertical axis. And what we can see is that for this particular choice of the constant, and I've made the alpha and the beta both be one here for simplicity, we see that the plot comes along and the humans end up winning. They have a non-zero amount at the time when the aliens have gone down to zero. The humans have one. If I change the value of the constant and stop it from being negative, but now make it positive, this is the scenario where the aliens win because as I go down the curve, it ends up with zero humans and a non-zero amount of aliens. There's actually one number right in the middle here, if I come to c equal to zero precisely, where they both just decline in a straight line and they end up with zero aliens and zero humans. <laughs> kind of a disaster. But what I really like about this model is it illustrates what we refer to as Lanchester's square collapse. And the argument here is if I am far away from the end of the battle, 
both sides are losing troops and sort of going down at this approximately constant rate of change. But as you start getting smaller, there's it gets curvier. It, it sort of falls off towards the end. This is the square collapse that occurs. By the way, my thank you to Maple Learn, who is the sponsor of today's video and makes this amazing software that we're using. If we hadn't wanted to go through the work of solving our differential equation earlier, I certainly could have come in here and uh, typed in our differential equation, clicked the solve differential equation button and get our solution. We get these hyperbolas this way. Now what we had seen with Maple Learn was that for different values of C, this aliens or the humans were gonna win. But, but how can we figure out the value of C exactly? So what I want to do here is I want to plug in the initial conditions into my formula. I want to plug in what happens at the beginning, at the time t equal to zero. If I do that, I get the following expression. I also multiply both sides by two and I absorb it into my constant, 2c, c doesn't matter, it's just a constant. And since our main condition of who was going to win was whether c was greater than zero or c was less than zero, this all turns out to be equivalent to saying that aliens are going to win if beta times the initial population of aliens squared is bigger than alpha times the initial population of humans squared. And similarly, if I flip the inequalities, the humans are going to win. So ultimately, what we care about is not just the original fighting effectiveness, the, these constants alpha and beta. And it's not just the initial populations a naught and h naught. It's this measure of sort of fighting power, which is the constant times the square of the population beta times a naught squared, or alpha times h naught squared. This phenomenon is often called the Lanchester square collapse. And as we see here, it's the a of zero squared and the h of zero squared, it is a square law. The infamous battle of Gettysburg in the American Civil War has been studied in many ways, but in one paper by Armstrong and Sodergren, they use, well, precisely the model of this video. They really dug into the data to calibrate the values of the constants, and their ultimate prediction was that with somewhere between hundreds and thousands of extra men, men that were available in the vicinity of the battlefield, it could have been the case that Pickett's charge in this battle actually would have worked out. At least that's according to this model and this estimate of the parameters. That's not meant to reflect some sort of historical fact or certainty, and disclaimer, I'm just a Canadian mathematician, what do I know? But it's interesting how the model can be used to look back in history and wonder about these kind of counterfactuals. Now, the original model that we came up with, just one of many models, I was really thinking about these ranged units such that the rate of change was proportional to the amount of the enemy. But you can imagine different scenarios. If you're fighting, for example, with swords in some constrained place where only one person can fight another person at the same time, that kind of multiplication of the size of the force might not be relevant. Instead, you might have a model like this one, where the rate of change just depends on some constant. It's your, your loss is constant in any moment of time. Well, if that's the case, we can repeat the procedure very quickly now. I can do the same thing and divide one equation by the other. I can take the derivatives and by a chain rule, write it as dA, dH. I can separate my variables to both sides, a side with As and a side with Hs. I can integrate both sides of it. And this is going to get me ultimately a linear model that A is these constants times H plus C. This is often called Lanchester's linear model because the result is, well, just linears. Coming back to Maple Learn, as we see, plugging this in, it's just straight lines. And depending on the value of C, sometimes it's the case that the aliens are going to win and sometimes it's the case that the humans are going to win. And it's not that one model is right or wrong, it sort of depends on the technologies and geographies and dynamics of the battle, which one might be more appropriate. And indeed, there's many possibilities, maybe you get powers of one and a half, somewhere in between one and two, that could be a possible way to model something as well. There's many different choices. Models are only as good as they are at explaining phenomena in the real world, and sometimes tweaking the model to better explain the world is absolutely appropriate. So depending on your exact context, which exact of these models you want to use is going to depend. I can also use Maple Learn to show a different type of visualization. This is referred to as a direction field. So once again, I've put in my derivatives. But if you think about what a derivative does, this is telling me the rate of change of one of the variables with respect to time and the rate of change of the other. I can combine both of these into these little arrows. So what a specific arrow says that at this particular location, this amount of aliens, this amount of humans, how are things changing? And then this arrow, its horizontal and vertical components are given by these two different rates of change. 
So you can kind of imagine a direction field is telling you at any given moment, here's the arrow of where you're going to move in the solution space. For us, we're only gonna focus on the first quadrant because we're only gonna imagine positive amounts of aliens and humans. That doesn't know what negative humans means. But if I follow those arrows, I can kind of get precisely those hyperbolas that we've seen in the past. And again, if I go along here and follow the arrows, I again get that kind of hyperbola. It ends up being completely horizontal along the y-axis, completely vertical along the x-axis. Direction fields are one of our nicest ways to be able to visualize systems of differential equations like this one. Now, ultimately, we've been doing mathematical modeling in this video, and mathematical models are not right or wrong. They just are varying degrees of useful at explaining the phenomenon around us. In some historical battles, this model might be very effective at explaining what happens, and in other battles, it might not be helpful at all. Regardless, I hope you enjoyed this exploration. Do check out the sponsor of today's video, which was Maple Learn. My thank you to Maple Learn once again, and we're gonna do some more math in the next video.